Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Okay guys, so I am going to start off this video by telling you I am very sick, and um, I'm gonna try to be as enthusiastic as possible today, uh, like I am in my uh, everyday videos, but if the enthusiasm level is not up here, uh, that is the reason why I'm trying to preserve my voice. My throat is hurting and uh, I don't wanna exacerbate the problem. So, you know, if my voice seems a bit toned down in this video, it's not because I am not excited about the news that I'm about to tell you guys. It's just that I'm sick and, uh, you know, I just don't wanna make the problem much worse. Well, I think you know why we should all be excited. Breaking news from James K. Filan, Judge Torres overrules the SEC's objections and orders the SEC to turn over the Hinman documents, guys, and this is what's gotten the XRP price to pump since yesterday afternoon. In the uh, late afternoon, September the 29th, XRP rose about 17.5% in just a few hours. It went from 43 cents to about 51 cents, and uh, overnight we did see a bit of a retracement, okay? XRP was climbing. By the way, I have this on the 15-minute time frame. Uh, XRP was climbing throughout the night and uh, just over the last 45 minutes or so. This is what we're seeing now. High volume, uh, selling pressure, and uh, the price coming back down. Right now it's trading at about 48.3. Um, so this is the micro trend. Of course, this is on the 15 minute. Obviously the price has pumped based on this most recent news. So, I mean, I guess the question now, what's going to happen to price action? And what does this mean in the greater scheme of things? Uh, everybody in the XRP community, obviously very excited. Shattering defeat for the SEC, says Moon Lambo. Judge rules, they must hand over the Hinman emails. John Deaton, do you think this is the start? of the 90 day timer for the SEC and Ripple to reach a settlement. So this is what's on people's minds now, the settlement. Now that the SEC has been delivered this blow, what is going to happen next? And for those of you who might not know what uh, Moon Lambo is talking about here, this is what I was referencing for everybody wondering, uh, retweeting out a John Deaton tweet from April the 18th. I said, I believe the case would settle within 90 days from Judge Torres affirming Judge Netburn's decision. I still stand by that. However, I didn't really consider Ripple insisting on summary judgment without the emails and documents. In hindsight, it does make sense. So now the question is kind of changed. We were expecting uh, a final verdict into 2023 and mid 2023 at that. But now that we've gotten this new information, what are we to expect and where could the price go next? I got Ellie Turret here on Twitter. Statement from Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alderati on today's ruling on the Hinman emails, okay? So she's just reporting on what uh, Stuart Alderati was saying. We're pleased by the sixth and hopefully final decision from the court to produce these documents, which grants Ripple access to important documents that the SEC has continued to withhold. The SEC continues to deliberately foster uncertainty rather than provide clear guidance, which is why we are vigorously defending this case on behalf of the entire crypto industry. And investors in the XRP community uh, responding to this, XRP Crypto Wolf saying, you know, wow, I'm absolutely shocked. The judge has told the SEC six times to produce the Hinman documents and still nothing. XRP Viking saying, I would say six times enough is enough. If the SEC uh, doesn't comply to the judge's ruling this time, the court judges should dismiss the case as there is absolutely no common sense in this SEC circus and lawsuit against Ripple. Mickey B. Fresh down here, uh, also chiming in, it's probably known by Ripple to some extent what's in there. It doesn't cost Ripple anything to pursue. What's to gain from misdirect? Ripple's summary judgment arguments weren't dependent on the Hinman emails. Actually, Ripple already used Hinman emails uh, to make the SEC look like fools. So some other good points here from some in the XRP community. Stuart Alderati uh, tweeting this out. Oops, did somebody drop their security, a jab at the SEC, pointing to the orange and the whole Orange Grove example of the Howey test. So uh, people having fun here on Twitter, obviously. Fred Raspoli, a lawyer in the XRP community, posted this. XRP community thoughts on a wonderful win. Because I mean, quite frankly, this is a win for the XRP community. He says, first, although expected given the high burden SEC needed to carry, this win was amazing given Judge Torres was making me sweat, but not attorney Jeremy Hogan who called the end of September. Second, he says, we have more context of Judge Torres' uh, judicial temperament in this case, and it does not bode well for the SEC. The writing is on the wall, but I'm still not sure if the SEC has the literacy level to read it. So he's basically saying, you know, I think it's pretty obvious now where the judge stands in this case, but is the SEC, are the SEC attorneys smart enough to realize that, or are they going to still try to push the envelope? Uh, he goes on to say, Judge Torres telegraphed, how she will evaluate the SMJ papers and case law, and it's not in the SEC's favor. 
Third, Judge Torres uh, did hint that the documents sought, uh, though relevant for discovery, may not actually be admissible for trial. But this is not a major concern because once they are disclosed, the damage to the SEC is done. Fourth, Judge Torres did not have any harsh language for the SEC, like Judge Netburn's hypocrisy zinger, uh, but did allude to the schizophrenic nature of the SEC's position. Rest assured, uh, the message was sent to the SEC and its ship is sinking and will not be getting many more offers for lifeboats. Fifth, now we see how desperate the SEC truly is. Does it file motion for reconsideration? Interlocutory appeal, writ of mandamus, SEC can easily drag the email saga out another one to three months if it wants to, but any negative appeal at ruling for the SEC will damage all government agencies in the future, not just the SEC. So there is the possibility that the SEC could continue to drag this out. The question is, nothing, nobody's on their side. I mean, the judge uh, has already, at least according to Fred Raspoli here, the judge has already kind of alluded to the fact that, um, you know, she is not in favor of the SEC's position. And so how long is the SEC going to continue to drag this out? And how much patience does the judge really have now at this point for the SEC? Is the ruling basically set? And will further delays only hurt the SEC's position, according to Judge Torres? All very good observations here uh, from Fred Raspoli. Monkey down here saying the SEC may change their litigation strategy to shifting the focus on Hinman and throwing him under the bus. Only way to keep their hand in crypto is settlement, giving Ripple and XRP majority market share, drag out and, and sue other cryptocurrencies, hoping for quick settlements for precedent. I think if they threw Hinman under the bus right now, that would not look good. I think that would look even worse. Eon, pronounced Owen here, uh, pointed this out. Uh, reading this suggests there is. Maybe it's mostly at Hinman, but that still damages the SEC as he was at the SEC at that point. Uh, defendants argue they may be used to obtain potential impeachment evidence to impeach witnesses at trial because the court agrees that the internal speech documents might be relevant for this purpose. Apex Crypto down here saying, you know, if the SEC drags the Hinman email saga out further, this tells me they have more jokers and other potential enforcement actions outside of the Ripple case. It's the only reason I can think of uh, as to why they are beating this dead horse. If they lose, it will cripple their future efforts. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure they have other things riding on this. Uh, John Deaton here also chiming in. This is why the crypto market should be thankful. Ripple is fighting this case. If you add up the legal fees Ripple has paid to finally get a ruling from Judge Torres, it's like two to three million dollars and they still don't have the documents. Next step, SEC asks to certify or mandamus. And Fred Raspoli uh, just responding down here, bingo, that actually is the one and maybe only reason the SEC wouldn't appeal the decision. Although I still think it does appeal slash delay. This is a fairly significant factor cutting against such action. So still thinking that, uh, you know, the SEC will delay. Now, James K. Filan bringing his two cents on this as well. Some thoughts on the next steps in the quest for the Hinman documents. The SEC has a number of procedural cards they can play to try to further delay complying with the order to produce the Hinman documents. First, they can ask Judge Torres to reconsider her order overruling the SEC objection. Second, they could skip the motion for reconsideration and just ask her to certify an appeal of the decision she issued today. So reconsider uh, her decision or certify an appeal uh, of the decision. Third, they could go to the Court of Appeals directly on a petition of writ mandamus. Uh, as I've mentioned before, these are all low probability of uh, success maneuvers. But if the SEC wants to delay producing the documents, they may try any or even all of these maneuvers. And that could take an additional two to three months to work out. None of these attempts at delay, however, will impact the summary judgment schedule. So the summary judgment schedule, uh, it looks as though, will still be intact. XRP Crypto Wolf down here, uh, why can't the SEC just admit they're losing to Ripple instead of delaying the inevitable? Uh, now, again, it could be because they have other fish that they want to fry down the road. Uh, you know, maybe they have their sights on other projects that they're already planning on suing. A Money Crypto Not down here saying perhaps at this point it's about punishment. They know a delay is costly, at least in the short term, to Ripple. I think they're just being bullies who don't want to back down, perhaps because they are losing. Uh, they just want to dig in, possibly. Straight up XRP down here saying, you know, thank you for listing the possible delay tactics, James. I guess that's one thing that we know for sure. The SEC has been all about the delay game, obviously pushing the inevitable conclusion. Uh, this also is a good sign that they will likely lose, you know, a sign that we have seen since um, er early on in the case. And the Wrath of Kahneman bringing this up, there's a lengthy response to the DPP issue in Judge Torres' last ruling. But this one stood out to me as perhaps the first instance addressing how the SEC has changed their story. Uh, although he is not a lawyer, he does uh, notice this. Her conclusions were based on prior representations the SEC made in this litigation. 
uh, see this order uh, I at 14, the text of the speech and disclaimer, and then see this order here, and applicable regulations at uh, ID at 7. He goes on to say, and in denying the attorney-client privilege issue too, maybe the chickens have finally come to roost. As to the first objection, Judge Netburn did not conclude that the attorney-client privilege does not apply because the advice was given to inform Hinman's conduct as opposed to the SEC's conduct. Judge Netburn correctly noted that privileged legal advice must be intended to guide future conduct uh, or to assess past conduct. And she concluded that the advice Hinman received from the SEC's lawyers was intended to inform him about the law uh, so that he could draft an accurate speech which addresses legal issues and to provide him with policy and communication advice. Oh, and down here, uh, also responding to this tweet thread, uh, this response here that I mentioned in the last one, uh, Capitano Crypto down here saying, yep, that was the it's settled, him and own opinion, uh, it has caused the SEC nothing but bother. Judge Netburn needs to be praised for her due diligence. And of course, the XRP community lawyer, Jeremy Hogan, Judge Torres agreed with Judge Netburn on every single issue related to the Hinman emails. Relevance, check. Attorney-client privilege, check. DPP, check. Some days I'm proud of this profession. In the conclusion down here, uh, for the foregoing reasons, the court overrules the SEC's objections and directs the SEC to comply with the orders. The law is still alive, says Weezy at Nerd Nation Unbox down here. Uh, other people in the community just uh, responding with their opinions. I mean, a lot of chatter in the XRP community right now. Even Meta 87 here, Gavel in September, bringing up the bearable guy, Gavel, conveniently sitting right beside the month of September. Now, um, I mean, I don't know how bearable guy could have known that. Uh, so I think maybe that's a little far-fetched. Nevertheless, uh, we've also got Johnny here at Crypto God John here on Twitter. Ripple going to go full send mode. Uh, the court has reviewed the remainder of the thorough and well-reasoned orders for clear error and finds none. So, you know, the judges have done their due diligence. And the fact that people are buying XRP is certainly reflecting that. Even the Abra CEO on a Bitcoin Maxi channel was talking about the Ripple SEC lawsuit and how this is important for everybody in the community. And you know what? He wasn't even cut off. The variable remains the SEC and, you know, guidance around what's a security, what's not, how enforcement works. Are we basically uh, doing, um, creating rules via enforcement or creating rules via guidance? And I think there's been a fear out of creating rules via guidance because you get it wrong and you can fall back on enforcement. And, and so that's disconcerting. Right. And, and right. so I think the, the X, the ripple XRP case is, is a good case in point. They waited years before bringing that case years and they let the, what they claim were these new security offering sales go on and on, and on and on and on. And, and that may no any judge should look at that and go, well, okay, if you knew this was a security offering from the beginning, I get you can pick and choose your battles, but look at the amount of money they were raising for years, right? right. So, so anyway, we're making tremendous progress. We're able to operate within this existing ecosystem with lawyers who know what they're doing. You got a lawyer up. That's just the way it goes. We have. And, you know, you make a case. And, and so I think that the space is going to evolve very quickly. Major players are now in a position to provide, um, you know, custody services where they were afraid to before. Uh, and, and that's evolving at an at a, at a, at a incredible rate. So I, I think all of this is just going to evolve over time. Securities, commodities, banking, um, you know, and, and um, yeah, we'll see, how, we'll see how it plays out. Essentially stating, you know, it's positive for the entire industry. We're going to see how this plays out. Ripple was there for the entire crypto industry. And uh, I mean, they need a pat on the back for that, for sure. And so as I've been recording this video, you guys can see that, um, you know, price is still dipping right now. We're at 48.2. Uh, again, this is just on the 15 minute time frame. Throwing that on the hourly, um, you know, the, the trend isn't looking terrible. The high volume is not great, but uh, I mean, for all intents and purposes, this trend is looking fairly good. Here it is on the four hour, and you guys can see that uh, even on the four hour, this looks fairly robust. Let's not forget, yesterday XRP did go up over 17% in just a few hours. So a little jolt pumping up the price of XRP. Is it sustainable, guys? Blockchain Backer here on Twitter. And I know you guys love the Blockchain Backer. I'm really looking forward to seeing his video today about this. As the news dropped that Judge Torres overruled the SEC's objection, ordering the SEC to turn over the Hinman emails, the price of XRP rose on hopes of a settlement coming soon, with XRP being freed from the wraths of the SEC and exchanges potential relisting. It did surge over 17%. When optimistic news hits along with price appreciation, many get overly eager that we are currently going to moon. 
While I am all for this, as XRP is my largest holding, I'll show some concerns on the chart of where we are at. First of all, retracement levels. We are stuck, guys. Popped up to the 0.618 uh, and now hovering around the 0.5, as you guys can see. Uh, while it is volatile and exciting, we did see the same level of movement last week, and it is how XRP typically appreciates, quickly. However, we are still underneath retracement levels, with a lower low for now. No breakout occurred yet. That could change though, but none yet. So um, just showing this chart here on the one hour, retracement levels still not broken. Also, it is not revisited breakout levels to check support yet. And what he says is historically, we have found support in these levels down in here. It could still take a while before those levels retrace. And so wouldn't it be great if it just happened right now? While there can be times where assets won't come to revisit their breakout levels right away, as he points out here with the XRP chart uh, and down on the bottom, the Bitcoin chart, eventually they typically do. So not in all cases, but this does eventually happen. Again, this is the Bitcoin chart on the bottom. And as you guys can see, it took an entire year for that to backtest that level before it made new higher highs. Not to say that it's going to take an entire year for XRP, but there is precedent to say that it could. So is it a breakout? Nope, he says. It could become one, but it's definitely not right now at the 0.618 retrace, still under the 200 week moving average and a lower low. Uh, to see an example of something like this that turns over, we can use Ethereum Classic as an example. And so uh, just giving us an example here of Ethereum Classic retracing down here into that breakout level again, took over a year for that to occur. So it is exciting for sure, but we're underneath retracement levels currently, still underneath moving averages and haven't visited the breakout level yet. So I'm still on caution for that happening. I know, not what everybody wants to hear, but it's what I see, he says. While I don't know which one will happen, uh, I will say that if we are going to revisit the 37, 39 cent a level at some point, and if XRP is trend changing to bullish again, I'd rather get the test at 37 to 39 over with now, obviously, uh, because that type of bull run would be much more relaxing. So yeah, let's just hit it. Let's just retrace there sooner rather than later, obviously, because it's just going to be a nail biting experience if we have to wait for, dare I say, a year. I mean, I don't think it's really going to happen though. Uh, there's too much excitement right now with regards to the case and a possible settlement on the table now that the SEC has to turn over those Hinman emails. And I mean, if this is the kind of action we're seeing for XRP now, when there is no definitive ruling in the case, can you just imagine where the price will go when we have a final ruling and once exchanges relist XRP, that's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.